Good morning. This is Eugene May. I am the teacher of Eagles Wings Ministries located in Dover, Florida, and I invite you to stay with me for the next half hour or so as we talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I began this series a few weeks ago, and this past Tuesday did a third issue of this teaching and uh, we had a technical problem and things did not work exactly the way we wanted to sometimes we have that and I apologize but anyway I'm going to reteach that this morning and so I'm going to invite you to turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 Isaiah the prophet is speaking to Israel concerning the enemies that have tried to come in and tried to enslave them and he says it this way and it shall come to pass in that day talking about the day of the Lord the day when the Holy Spirit would be poured out upon the church it shall, be, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden, that's the enemies, the burden will be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now the anointing has the power of God to remove burdens from your life. In fact, the anointing is there as the power of the Holy Spirit sent from God so that no matter what enemy arises in your life, you can overcome that enemy and you can win. Now, going back to some of the things that we've already spoken about, for every assignment that you have in life, there is an anointing that God wants to give you. We can say that there's the general anointing of the Holy Spirit for every one of us. But let's just say that God's called you as a leader. He's going to give you a leadership anointing. If he's called you to administrate things, he's going to give you a, an administrative anointing. If he's called you to walk in a ministry of healing, he's going to give you a healing anointing. And so I could go on and on and on talking about various things that God may have called us to do and given us the abilities to do that he wants to anoint. And so there is a general anointing of the Holy Spirit, but then there is a, an anointing of the Holy Spirit for every situation and circumstance that you may be in. And so I want us to continue in this teaching doing and saying the things that we need to do and say. There are two great tragedies, and I've already talked about this, the two great tragedies that God spoke to my heart about some time ago. And one of them is that so many of us never walk in the anointing that God has for us. And so we miss out. We miss being the men and women, the people of God that he has called us to be. And so I want you to understand that my desire in these teachings is to get you to receive the fact that God has an anointing for you. Now, one thing that I do need to, uh, to reiterate here is not all of us are called to do the same thing. I am called to the fivefold ministries. I operate as a prophet and apostle, and also I have an, a, a teaching anointing. And thank God for that. I, I appreciate that in my own life. But you may not be called to one of the five ministries of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. But you have a calling on your life first to be a believer, 
and second to be one that God can use and he wants to anoint the abilities that you have in your life so that you can do the work that he's called you to do. I said there were two tragedies. Number one is people don't recognize the anointing that God has called them to walk in. Number two was, or is, and we have already talked about this. Number two, speaking about the anointing in other people's lives. You see, one of the things that makes a real difference is when we can recognize that God has put us in relationship with people who also are anointed and so that we can be the people that he has called us to be and that we can learn from other folks. You're listening and watching someone who knows how to learn. Not just from books, not just from the Bible, but I can learn from other people. And I can receive from other people. And because of that, I'm constantly increasing my understanding. And also, I am making a way for the anointing that is in other people to be a part of my life and to bless me. And I thank God for that. And so these are things that we are laying foundations for because the anointing of God that is in you is an anointing for you to have the best life possible. Now, there are some things that we started talking about in our second teaching, some keys to understanding that the anointing flows in your life and also in the lives of other people. And so in order to continue this teaching, I need to go back for a few minutes and I need to reiterate some of the things that we've already talked about. You see, the anointing is the power of God. I've already said that today. But you need to get that in your heart. That the anointing is the power of God. It is the power of God given to us by the Holy Spirit for us to be able to break off everything that would want to hinder us. Break off the yoke, as we saw there in Isaiah. Now, the anointing is the power of God also to conquer every enemy that would come against you. I know I have mentioned that already in this particular video, but it's something that we need to grasp a hold of. You see, we have an enemy. Our enemy is Satan. The scripture tells us that the thief, and that's who Satan is, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. And I want to thank God for the teaching that Jesus did in his life to teach us how to overcome the works of the enemy. But Jesus is not here to speak directly to us right now. But we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is anointing us so that we can rise up and that we can overcome whatever enemy wants to stop us. You see, in Acts 10.38, and this is a verse that we've already looked at a couple of times, but it says simply this. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And so Jesus was anointed, but you are also anointed if you have the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, there's a third area that we already looked at. And that is that you have something in your life. You possess something. You have been gifted in your life with something that God wants to anoint. 
And so God says to us through his word, he says that we are to receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon us. And we are to be witnesses unto Jesus Christ uh, all over the world. Acts 1.8 says it this way, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Now, you have something that God wants to use to witness to people, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with those people so that they will be able to overcome. They will be able to win in this battle that we call life. Now, there's another area, number four. The anointing increases in your life proportionately to your dependence upon God. You see, this is something that we need to understand. It's not our anointing. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It comes from God. And so as I'm dependent upon him, that anointing is going to increase. Some people say, well, the anointing doesn't increase. Yes, it does. I want you to understand that that anointing, yes, is a gift. But he wants it to get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger in you. And it's going to happen as you are dependent upon God. Independence from God <laughs> won't work. Dependence on God will work. And you will find that things will increase. Now, we're going to begin talking today about the things that we have not laid a foundation You see, God wants us to understand that the anointing of God will increase in our lives as we allow God to put order into our lives. What am I talking about? What am I talking about when I talk about order? A lot of us have a lot of disorder in our lives. Uh, things are haphazard. We don't remain consistent in our walk with God. God is looking for consistency. He is looking for those who will say, all right, God, here I am. You're going to be the one that leads me, and I'm going to follow and I'm going to do the things that you have said for me to do. God is a God of discipline. He's a God of order. When he created things, he created them in order. You know, some people say the earth just had, had to happen because it, the things were in the right place. No, God created it. God created it step at a time. You go to Genesis chapters 1 and 2 and you will see how that he put order in things. And God wants us to have order in our lives. And so God wants us to be disciplined. Discipleship is something that many of us do not understand. We think discipleship is just being a Christian. No, discipleship is being one who walks not only being a Christian, but walks a disciplined life. In fact, the word disciple and the word discipline come from the same source. And God wants you to be disciplined in your life. And so the anointing brings order into your life. I believe 
that the increase of the anointing will bring an increase of order. But also, we can turn that around. The increase of order is going to bring more of the anointing as we allow the Holy Spirit to work within our lives. The sixth thing that I want to talk about is this. The anointing that we are talking about, the anointing of the Holy Spirit to accomplish the will and purposes of God in your life, is not determined by your perfection, but it's determined by the will of God. One of the things that I find that a lot of younger Christians, I'm not talking about younger in age so much as younger in experience. One of the things that they struggle with is the fact that, well, I'm not perfect yet, so how can God use me? I'm not perfect yet. Well, I've been a Christian since 1949. That's a couple of years ago. Been a Christian since 1949. I was just a small boy whenever I realized that I was a sinner and that Jesus had died on the cross for me. And if I ask him to forgive my sins and come into my life and be my Savior and my Lord, that he would, and I would be saved. That happened in 1949. Now, here I am. This is 2022 that I am giving this teaching. You might say, well, you ought to be perfect. Well, that's my goal. My goal is to be like Jesus. Sometimes I have fun with people and I'll ask them a question like this. What's the goal of the Christian life? And they'll say, heaven. No, that's our destination. It's not our goal. Our goal is to be like Jesus. And so I want to be perfect. Jesus was perfect but I'm not yet, but I'm working on it. I want to be, but the thing that I want you to understand is we don't wait until we are perfect to do the will of God. God uses imperfect people. Now, I am going to say this again. I want to be perfect. I want everything to be in line with the will and purposes of God. I want to do the things that he calls me to do. But I'm like the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul said this. In Romans chapter 7, verse 18, he says, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, in this physical body, no good thing dwells. Why? He says this physical body is affected by everything around us. It's affected by what we see, what we hear, what we touch. And I could go on with all the five senses, yes. And so because we live in this physical body, we have these struggles. But the Apostle Paul didn't stop simply because he had some difficulties. He didn't stop ministering. He didn't stop sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I believe he understood exactly what I said to you a moment ago. And that is the anointing that we have, this anointing of the Holy Spirit, is not determined by our perfection, but it's determined by the will and purpose of God. What has God said to us? What has God called us to do? Now, there are people who say, well, when I look at folks in the Bible, you know, they were perfect. No, they weren't. God used David. God used Gideon. God used 
others, and I could go on with a list of people that God used and used mightily who had difficulties in their lives. Now, that's not an excuse for having difficulties. No. God wants us to strive for perfection. He wants us to continue. The Apostle Paul said it this way. He says, I haven't overcome everything yet. I haven't attained everything yet. But I want to tell you, I am moving on. I am pushing on. I am going forward. I have a thing that I have said for years that if I fail, I want to fail forward. You would say, well, I thought you were going to say I want to fall forward. No, no. I want to fail forward. What do I mean by failing forward? I'm going in the right direction. And if I stumble and I fall and I fail, then I'm going to get up and continue going forward. I'm not going to let it be a, a back set to me. I'm going to get up and go with God. Now, God sees us and he says, I love you anyway. He sees our failures. He sees the things that happen in our lives. But he says, I'm going to use you anyway. Why? Because we belong to him. And he is bigger than any problem that you would ever have in your life. He's bigger than any hindrance that you would ever possess in your life. Now, let's take another step. You see, the anointing that we're talking about, this anointing of the Holy Spirit that is within you, will attract some people to you, but it will also alienate other folks. I hate to say that. I wish I didn't have to say that to you. But I've discovered that in this life, some people are going to receive the things that I do in the name of Jesus, and other people are going to criticize them. And other people are going to turn away. Is that because of me? Probably. Probably because of my character, or say, I say something, or I do something that's incorrect. But also, I have discovered that as we stand on the truth, that some people are going to turn away from the truth. I wish I could say to you that everybody's going to love you. Everybody's going to receive from you. Everybody's going to understand you but I can't. And a lot of people stop because of that very thing. They say, well, somebody said something negative about me. Somebody said something negative about my ministry if they're, if they're called into ministry. I want to tell you, they said things negative about Jesus too. The Apostle Paul too all of the other disciples of Jesus. Negative things. In fact, most of the disciples of Jesus were murdered. Why? Because people didn't like them. Didn't like the message. God wants us to understand that he didn't call us to be the friend of everybody. But he did call us to be friends of Jesus. And so there are times that we have to make choices. And some of those choices are very difficult because we have to make choices to move on in the anointing of the Holy Spirit rather than to stop and not go forward with God. Why? 
because the anointing that is in you is going to attract some people and alienate others. I wish it were not the case. I'm one of those guys that likes to be liked by everybody. But I'm going to tell you, there have been times in my life where people have said negative things about me. That people have said, hey, you know, he is one of those faith folks. He's one of those people who believe that we can walk by faith in every area of our lives, and that's impossible. I want to tell you, yes, I am a faith guy. I teach faith. I walk by faith. And if you're going to be offended with that, I'm sorry. I'm also a guy that believes that this word, this Bible that I have in front of me here, is the word of God. And I preach this word and I teach this word consistently. And God wants me to stand by what I say. And so here I am, yes, I am teaching and I am preaching the Word of God and if it alienates you, I'm sorry. But God wants me to realize that the anointing that He's placed in me will alienate some folks. But I thank God that it also attracts a lot of people. A lot of you who watch these videos, a lot of you who stand with us financially and materially, and we thank you for that because it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, we talked about the anointing in other people and receiving the anointing in other people. I want to speak about that again just for a moment. You see, your success in life, and many of you who have been called into ministry, your success in ministry may depend upon the anointing that you choose to respect. There are people in my life, people that I have known for years, that have sown into my life. And I'm not talking about sowing finances or anything like that. But they have sown the truth into me. And I have watched them. And I have watched the anointing in their lives. And I have said to God, I respect that person. Lord, let me have the same kind of anointing. And do you know I believe that it works. That when we respect the anointing in other people, God is able to turn around and use that anointing in my life, in your life. Years ago in Canada, I met a I met an evangelist. I met an evangelist that had a tremendous reputation and and uh, uh, he became a friend of mine. But there was a young man, a young man who uh, considered that evangelist his spiritual father. And that young man began to minister by the power of the Holy Spirit exactly like the evangelist that I had met. And I looked at that, and I said to myself, I said, that young man is going to carry on that ministry. He is going to do the things that God has called him to do because he respects the anointing in the older man. And that's what's happened. That older man, that older evangelist has now gone to be with the Lord. But that younger man is continuing that ministry. We see the same anointing. We see that working in that particular young man. And so God wants us to have success in life. 
success and walking in the anointing that God has put within us. And I trust that you've been able to receive what I've shared today. We're going to continue this teaching next week. And I hope that uh, you will receive that. Because I'm going to talk about some other keys to see the anointing grow in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word today. I thank you for what you are doing within each one of our lives. And I pray today, God, that your anointing increases in each one of us. Now, Father, as I bring this teaching to a close today, I ask you to touch your people, to heal, to deliver, to do the things that are necessary in their lives. And I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you want to be a part of what we're doing and you want to help us in ministry, you can go to PayPal and go to Eugene and use Eugene May at eugenemay.org and uh, we would appreciate that. God bless you. You have a great day and know that God is for you and if God is for you, who can be against you? See you next week.